Hello and welcome to the second installment of the tuning and data logging videos. I just wanted to give a disclaimer that I will not be doing an actual full poll data log, just a simulation to give you guys an idea of how to do it correctly and how to put yourself in the right position to use the access port to data log and still be able to run out from the 2100 RPM to redline as the uh, Mountain instructions do say. Again, I do want to bring up the importance of these instructions and the importance of reading them and understanding them. Now the first thing you want to do before you make an actual data log run is make sure that your climate control system is completely turned off. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your trash control is completely or your ETS is completely disabled and by doing this it's not just hitting the button you actually have to hold it and you'll see on your main display of your gauges here that it'll actually have a status bar that shows it that it is turned off. So we're going to hold it and it says hold switch to turn ECS off and now we actually have electronic stability control off and you can see it in the corner off also. As you can show between your fuel gauge and your heat gauge, the eye is going to re represent that your ECS is turned completely off. So now what I have found that works best for data logging is to actually when you very first start the run to make sure that you're clear of traffic and you're in a safe position but you're going to want to go ahead and first run out first gear so basically run out first gear to about 3000 rpm and then after you get to about 3000 rpm you want to shift into second and short shift second so you're going to want to shift from second to third around 2500 RPM so it puts you in the rev range of being right around 1800 to 2100 RPM. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that and like I said this is a demonstration log only. So we'll start off in first, fill that all the way out, go to second and then we're going to short shift second put ourselves right around right around 1500 I like to start the data log so I know it started and it is logging so we can now start our log 2100 full throttle and once we hit our red line simulated red line and we know that we are safe we can then stop the data log. All right, now after doing our two data logs in the vehicle, we are then going to want to move on to the next most important step, and that is transferring the logs from the Cobb access port onto the computer so you can send them into your tuner. And I'm going to go through that with you right now. So the first thing you want to do is attach your Cobb access port via the micro USB to USB to your computer. It will automatically turn on. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to your Cobb access port manager program and look through it. You're going to see your anti-theft mode, everything that you've seen when you loaded it on the computer originally, except for two extra things, your data logs, which are right here and right here. I have two. So what we're going to do is we're going to select both data logs and then we're going to go to the right hand of the screen here. Kind of looks like the old three and a half inch uh, floppy drives they used to use back in the uh, way back days. We're going to hit that which is going to save the files to your computer. Now this is going to give us the option on where to save them. I usually pick desktop as it's the easiest place to rename them and basically attach them to an email to send back to the tuner. So I'm going to select desktop and 
choose. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and minimize the access port program. And we are going to see our data logs on our desktop. Now these are CSV files, which are Excel files. But the most important thing that we want to do once we export these is name them to the proper name of the tune that we were running when we were data logging. So basically, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to rename it to mine. And the most important thing to have is your name, the car's date, production date, whether you have a 2016 or 2017, the octane of fuel that you had in your vehicle, which should always be the highest octane you can achieve in your state, whether it's 93 or 91, and the name of the log. In my case, the name of my log was Beta1Y, my octane was 93, my name is Christopher Ayers, and I have a 2016 Focus RS. So we're going to name this Christopher Ayers underscore 2016 RS underscore 93 octane underscore beta 1 y underscore and then this is the most important part since this was the very first data log I ran I want to name it data log 1 data log 1 and then we'll save that. Now we'll go over to the other one and do the same thing with one minor change to naming it data log 2. So rename Christopher Ayers underscore 2016 RS underscore 93 octane underscore beta 1 y underscore data log 2. So now that we have these saved with all of the important information, we are then going to go to our email, which I have to tuner. Now what you want to have in your email in your description is the name of your tune, Christopher Ayers, Mound Tune 2016, 93 Octane, Beta 1Y Data Logs. And some information you're going to want to have in the body of the email that you sent our one is attached are my two data logs on the beta one y tune the added weight to the vehicle and the added weight is anything in the vehicle including yourself besides the gas so the added weight to the vehicle is 145 pounds which is my body weight there was no other weight in the vehicle then we're going to go ahead and name the fuel octane was 93 and then C attached data log 1 and 2 for beta 1Y and signature. Then we're going to go ahead and hit the attachment button and we are going to attach files from this computer and where you have those files on the desktop just select both of them, choose, and then hit send. Once you do that your tuner is then going to receive all of the information, including your name, your car's build date, your octane, the name of your log, and each one of your data logs, so they can then use the experience that Mountain has to go through those data logs and see if any small precision changes need to be made to optimize your performance and safety of your tune. 
Once that's finished, the next thing we will do is just wait back for an email from the tuner, either asking us to possibly run data logs on an updated beta version tune, or for the tuner to say that everything looks good, the performance looks good, um, safety looks good, everything looks good. And he will give you more information on that when he sends you that personal email because everything is personalized at Mountune to their own customers and the personalized tunes that you make for your vehicle.